Hello and welcome to this video. Buyer, seller, beware. Basically an analogy to shopping your manuscript. So this is really designed to uh, those who have completed writing a manuscript, a book, a set of poems or whatever and they're now looking to um, go out there and shop it around. So let's go, we're going to use an analogy to help you be aware of something Maybe it's more human nature than anything else, but it's a bit of it applies. All right, so we're going to tell you a story. Once upon a time. So this is a true story. Okay, it was a once upon a time. Um, so I have a, a wife. I have four daughters. And at one point in time, we had three cars, including a van. Um, well, my three oldest daughters are all off at college, more or less. And my youngest daughter has her driver permit, but she not, doesn't have her full driver's license yet. So a little while ago, a few months ago, we decided, you know, we really don't need a van anymore. There's only three of us at home, and so um, we're going to go ahead and sell the van. So I said, okay, I will go ahead and sell the van. And since we're not trading it in for anything, I'm just going to go ahead and sell it on Craigslist. So I went ahead and I posted it on Craigslist. Well, within just, you know, within a few days, actually starting the very next day, um, I started getting just a lot of emails about inquiring about the car. And I'm like, wow, this is fantastic. I will be able to sell this. So I started opening up these emails and the first email basically said, oh, I'm interested in your car. However, I just want to make sure that there hasn't been any major issues with it. Um, so please click on this link and buy this history report. Um, and then from there, I will we'll, uh, determine whether this is something I want to pursue. And I thought, well, that's strange. Okay. Um, and so I said, well, uh, I replied back and I said, well, here's the deal. Here's the VIN number. You can run the report. <laughs> and if you decide to buy the car, I will subtract whatever you paid for the report. You know, because it was a very particular report they wanted. It wasn't like a, a mainstream one. And uh, anyway, so then I, you know, started checking my emails. And, and I probably got about a dozen emails with that same thing. But it was for different reports. Different people saying, oh, I'm interested in your car, but I need to have a report. Please you know, click on this link and buy this report. And I'm realizing, you know what? They're not interested in my car. They just want me to buy this report. Um, but, you know, and so had I been super anxious to sell the car and I was like, oh my gosh, I got to get rid of this. I may have fallen for that trick, but I, I didn't. Um, I did then go ahead and get a, uh, an email from a, a person. And the person basically said, you know what? I want to go ahead and meet you at your house and I'll take it for a test drive and I said okay well this person showed up and they were very schmarmy and, and you know had the, the used card salesman salesperson uh, vibe about them and you know we, we, we drove it around and and they asked some questions and you know and and stuff and they kicked the tires and all that and they said well I'll, I'll get back to you and I said okay fine so they got back to me a couple of days later and with a counter offer and they said, well, it just so happens I've been, you know, I've, I've asking around. And I, I have a friend that has this same make and model and year that you're selling. And, and they've had these particular issues with this vehicle. And so my counter offer is basically half of what you are asking for this van. Um, and <laughs> I, I, you know, again, I wasn't super desperate to, to sell it like I needed the money or I was going to die. Um but I was anxious to get rid of it, and I didn't like the process, okay? And I said, well, thank you for your offer, but no thank you. And the reason I could do this is because I had done my research. I did it. I did my research to kind of figure out what I could expect by selling a car on Craigslist. Um, I was surprised and a little uh, upset, a little frustrated, by how many people were trying to take advantage of me. Uh, they saw me as a motivated seller. And so they were trying to reach out to me to make money off of me um, as, as a motivated seller. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes we find the same thing when it comes to the publishing world. Okay, so how does this relate to book publishing? We need to be very careful about scams. Now, some of these can come across as seeming legitimate and whatever, but what often happens is um, you'll have uh, someone who has written their first book, 
And chances are, if it's their first book, this probably, you know, needs some work. It needs you know, some editing. It needs, you know, probably uh, any number of things. Well, they don't know what to do. And so they start just doing some basic, you know, kind of like posting it on Craigslist, as it were, doing some basic, you know, feelers out there and reaching out to agents or whatever. And there are very, there are, unfortunately are some very unscrupulous people out there who will see an eager person who's trying to get their book published and find ways to make money off of them. I, you know, so if you have an agent reach out to you and say, oh, you know, I will be your agent if you pay me, you know, X amount of dollars up front. Uh, no, no, you do not pay an agent up front. An agent makes money when you make money. Um, most traditional publishers, I would say all traditional publishers, they make money when you make money. So um, now there are joint venture publishing um, companies that, um, you know, you can go into with them and you can pay some money up front and you share the cost. That's a whole different story. And you have to be very careful and do your research to be for sure, make sure that they are, um, you know, responsible and and they are legitimate okay but generally you don't pay money out of your pocket for an agent or a publisher um, they make money when you make money if you go the traditional route now how does this work with editors okay well you may need your you know especially if it's your first book there may be that you need to have your book cleaned up and have it edited even before you can start shopping it around. And that's where freelance editors kind of come into play. Again, there are scrupulous um, freelance editors and there are unscrupulous freelance editors. So it needs to be, there needs to be a, a very strict contract, very clear cut on what is expected, what kind of scope of the work is, needs to be done. Um, you know, the time frame, you know, the amount paid up front, and any number of things and you know when you know if they want all the money up front before they even start working on it you know you have to work out all those details so the whole point of this video is that as we are looking to publish works or as we become editors we want to make sure that we are ethical and we're looking for ethical uh, people that um, are going to work out for us. Um, but unfortunately, there are many people who will prey upon those who they see as anxious. And there are people who have written books that are very anxious to get them out there to the point where they are willing to spend some money and take some risk when a little more time and research, do your research, as it were again, do your research on the folks before you decide to go with them. So. There is that, something to think about, and now consider it, ponder it. Anyway, there you go. All right, bye-bye.